So you're considering making a move to Clearwater, Florida? Well, in today's video, we're gonna cover the good, the bad, the ugly, all the reasons you might wanna consider moving to Clearwater, and also the reasons you might consider taking a second look at this. And we're gonna get into that right now. If we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I'm a licensed real estate agent and a team leader here in the Tampa Bay area. We make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. We also help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest in the greater Tampa Bay area. So if you have any questions, make sure you uh, reach out to us. All the contact information is down below. But also, if you're into all things Tampa Bay, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click that little bell. That way you can be notified notified every time we drop a new video just like this. So in today's video, I wanna get into why. What are the considerations that you might wanna take into account before you make the move to Clearwater? Because, you know, I get a lot of phone calls about Clearwater. It's one of the biggest draws in the entire Tampa Bay area. And for good reason. We have three miles of beautiful white sandy beaches backed up by resort style hotels, shopping, dining, Everything you could ask for is on that beach, literally. It is absolutely incredible. And over the last 10 years, Clearwater has exploded in popularity with over 4 million visitors annually. You know, it is a humongous attraction. You've got, you know, Clearwater Aquarium, um, Clearwater Beach. You've got all of the shopping and dining. It's just such a fun place to go hang out. But the real question is, why would you want to live here? And what things do you need to know before you make that move or what questions should you be asking more importantly? And in today's video, I wanna get into some of those things. We're gonna cover things like safety, we're gonna cover schools, we're gonna talk about housing, we're gonna talk about the amenities, we're gonna talk about lifestyle and of course weather, we're gonna talk about all the things that you're gonna to wanna to know before you are able to make an informed decision. So let's get right into that. All right, so first things first, Clearwater has a ton to offer, right? You know, we're gonna get into a bunch of the amenities today, but there's the obvious, you got the beach, the aquarium, um, the Philadelphia Phillies play spring training here. I mean, it's cool to have so much around and, and be able to do, you know, whether you're the flip-flop lifestyle person or you're the working professional, Clearwater has a lot to offer and we're going to get into a ton of that today. But the thing I know that, that people ask me when they call and say, hey, look, I'm considering making a move to the area, but I have concerns or I have questions. And these topics that we're going to cover today are exactly what you guys are asking. So I want to make sure that first of all, you know that you're not alone when you're asking these questions. Secondly, um, I will answer them to the best of my ability. Here's what we need to know. I want to make sure I lay some ground rules here. Um, I have a real estate license, which you know holds me back from being able to say certain things. And what I mean by that is I'm not allowed to tell you whether something's safe or not. However, I can absolutely tell you where to go look for the information. I'm not allowed to tell you whether a school district is good or not because that's a personal preference or a personal opinion, but I absolutely can give you the resources to go look where to find out what those schools are ranked and what the public is saying about them. And that's what we're gonna do in today's video. So know that anything that I'm citing here in terms of good or bad or rating is coming from a public source. And I'm gonna link all of those public sources down below. That way you can go do your own homework, which I strongly encourage you to do. Okay, so the first thing I want to start with here is one of the things that isn't so good and y'all I'm gonna call it for what it is uh, Clearwater has a C plus rating according to niche.com um, if you go to a website like neighborhood scout you can also look at the type of crimes that are happening in the area and from my research what I found was although there was not a lot of violent crime in the area there seems to be enough of the petty crime you know auto you know those types of things happening in the area and let me explain to you why I believe that's happening. Well, we have 4 million visitors a year. So that makes Clearwater a pretty easy target. We have people who tend to walk along the beaches and leave things out in the public. And you guys know if you're unscrupulous or you're looking for things to go to go steal, what better place than a giant public space where people are leaving everything laying on the ground. So of course that contributes to a ton of it. You know, so when you look at these crime maps, what I would love for you to do, I always tell everybody when they're considering making a move, what they should do is take the area that they're looking at moving and use a website like Neighborhood Scout and compare it to an area where they live currently. And what that'll do is it'll give you a very good perspective. 
Because what I found over time is we tend to believe that the areas we live in, you know, are very safe, you know, they don't have any crime. And then when you go look at the crime map, you find out that activity actually is occurring underneath your nose. Now, usually it's not anything crazy because we'd all see that in, in the evening news, uh, but stuff like people, you know, breaking into cars and, you know, kids lighting trash cans on fire, that stuff just happens in everywhere. And I realize you're, you're probably somewhere saying that doesn't happen where I live go check out those maps. You will be shocked, I assure you. So I would encourage you to go check that out. But overall, here's what I wanna share personally. I have no concern about walking around in downtown Clearwater or in Clearwater Beach with my family, ever. Not at night, not during the day. I don't have those concerns. That's for me and my personal uh, security and the way that I feel about things. But for you, it may be entirely different. But uh, what I would do is encourage you to go check out this map. But like I said, y'all, we're gonna share the truth today. And Clearwater, according to niche.com, rates a C plus. So that's something you need to take in consideration. All right, now when it comes to schools, the public school system in Florida, I think has room to grow, period, okay? We have some great schools in the area and I do not wanna take that away from any educator, but overall, Overall, Florida is not known for a public school system. Now, here's something that I actually think is really cool. We're school of choice here. So you can live in one city, take your kid to an entirely different school if you don't like the, the school that you're in, which I think is awesome. Um, Clearwater rates above the national average in terms of education, so that's good to note. Um, but in terms of Tampa Bay and what niche rates it, it rates it a B minus in terms of education. Now, again, how does that compare to where you're at? I don't know. You would wanna do that homework for yourself for sure. You know, at the time of this recording, the highest rated school, according to greatschools.org, is Curtis Elementary, which gets a 10. And then the lowest rated school in the, in the community is the high school, which gets a three. Now, I don't set those ratings. I Go look at how they're put together. They take into account a lot of different factors, including you know test grades, attendance, college attendance, all of those things. So I would encourage you to go check those out. And again, all of the links are down below. So if you have any questions, go check those links out because they are super valuable in terms of making um, a decision and helping you come to a place where you're comfortable and confident making that decision. So I would encourage you guys to go check that out. But if that is something that concerns you, you have a homeschool option. There's plenty of charter schools in the, in the county and there's plenty of private private schools in the area as well. So you definitely have access to world-class education. It's just a matter of how you need to plug in. I would keep this on your radar for sure. The third thing on our list today we're gonna to talk about is housing. And like I said before, I'm a licensed real estate agent. So this is one of my favorite topics to talk about. But right now at the time of this recording, the average home in Clearwater is just shy of 400,000. I think it's $399,500 um, in terms of the average single family home. Now the average single family home is roughly a 1600 square foot ranch, meaning it's one story. Um, it's three bedrooms, two bath, and has, uh, and has a garage. Um, again, right around $400,000. And I checked it out right before we jumped on here because I wanted to just get a, a feel for the lowest and the highest price point because Clearwater, obviously we have the Gulf of Mexico here. You've got waterfront in terms of intercoastal waterway. You've got access to the Gulf as well. I wanted to find out what the most expensive property currently listed is. So I want to share those two things with you right now. Let's check these out. So right now the lowest priced home on the market is a two bedroom, two bath, 856 square foot. Uh, $256,000 bungalow. And this thing, this is one of those houses that's close to downtown. This area right now, what we're seeing is a redevelopment where investors are coming in, purchasing homes like this. They are tearing them down and then building a new home or they're building condos if the the, uh, the property's large enough. We call it a scrape and build. That's very common in the area right now. And the redevelopment that is going down in the area here is really driving that. The highest price point, the highest active listing we have right now is a six bedroom, seven bathroom, 11,500 square foot, $11,450,000 property that is right on the intercoastal waterway. It's a beautiful estate. It is absolutely gorgeous, y'all. I mean, this is what people dream of um, when they talk about living on the water. To me, it reminds me of lifestyles of the rich and famous. You know, the old Robin Leach thing when I was a kid. This is the exact home that you would see on that show when you're just like, wow, wouldn't it be incredible to live there? So I think it's pretty cool and I wanted to share this with you guys. Okay, so now that you know what's up with housing, let's talk about shopping because I don't know about you, but where I live, I want to know how far away shopping is, especially Kate. My wife, 
you know, if we don't have a Costco by us, we can't make life happen. That's just how she feels. Maybe you can relate. Maybe you're a Sam's Club. Maybe you're a BJ's. Let me know down below. I would love to know which you prefer in terms of shopping. And hey, while you're down there, do not hesitate to click that little like button and also hit the subscribe bell. That way you don't have to chase down the next video. But let's talk about this shopping, right? So, you know, one of the things about Clearwater is it has a majority of uh, the big shopping in the in the county here. And I think that's important to note because, you know, we live uh, in Indian Rocks Beach area, just a little bit south of there. We're about seven and a half miles south of Clearwater Beach, just over the Indian Rocks Beach Bridge in Largo. Um, and for us, we only have one Costco in the entire county, and that happens to be in Clearwater. So my wife drives 25 minutes one way to get to Costco and then drives home. And well, I'm grateful that it's there, but I don't know we could have stretched it any further. Kate would not have put up with that because she's not a Sam's girl. Um, and BJ's is up in Clearwater too. So you're like, man, what the heck? So they definitely have a leg up on everybody else having the only Costco in the area, but that's not the only one. I know I'm going rampant here about the, the Costco, but you know, we they've got Clear, uh, BJ's, they've got a Walmart, they've got Whole Foods, they've got Sprouts, they've got uh, Winn-Dixie, they've got Publix, they've got Walmart. So they've got all the shopping you need in terms of groceries, but they also have a lot of other amenities. There's Clearwater Mall, there's Countryside Mall that actually has everything you need at your fingertips, including all the restaurants and shops. All of the big shopping centers in Pinellas County actually reside in uh, Clearwater themselves. So plenty to do in terms of shopping. Let's talk amenities because now this is where things start to get really important. And, and I love talking about what's going on in the community more than I like talking about housing, y'all. And let me explain why. The thing I've learned after being in real estate for 10 years is this. We all have this ideal lifestyle in our mind that we really want to live. And you know, our highest and best use is to match the correct community with the ideal lifestyle. And then housing seems to tend to take care of itself after that. Not that houses are important because they absolutely are. They offer us the security and everything that we need. But I think what we're most of the time looking for is the correct community. And this is where people tend to make a mistake, especially when they're relocating. So what I want to talk about when we get into the amenities is how do you envision yourself living in Clearwater? Are you a beach baby? Do you need to be close to the water where you can come home from work or, or you know, close the laptop <laughs> down because you work from home, walk out your front door and have access to Gulf beaches? Um, are you someone who are, is comfortable, you know, living a little bit further inland across the intercoastal waterway and you're comfortable driving 10, 15 minutes to the beach and that's not necessary, but you like having the ability to make an easy jump to the water. Well, that's great as well. Are you someone who doesn't care about that at all and you can learn, you live in the middle of the uh, county and not really be affected about it? You can kind of take it or leave it. These are things you need to know also. Do you need access to parks? Do you need access to dog parks? These are the things that you really wanna ask. That way you're really dialed in and you, you can make a really good decision on the community that you're trying to live in. So I wanna talk about these amenities and, and, and I think they're super important. I think it, it's worth sharing. So we talk about the amenities, obviously we have Clearwater Aquarium, which is a huge draw. Clearwater Beach, which is unbelievable. But when you live here, the thing you need to know is during season, and when I say season, I mean this is tourism season. This is what we refer to it as. And that's basically starts, it starts at the end of November, but it starts to get really busy after the new year when all of the snowbirds, which are the people who live here part-time, come down from the north um, in the winter after the holidays, and they usually go back right around in between uh, Easter and Mother's Day. But in between there, you've got all of the spring breaks and so much tourism that happens here that if you're a local resident, driving across the Clearwater Causeway to get to the beach now becomes a real strong inconvenience because sometimes it can take 30, 40, it can take an hour to get over that bridge, y'all. An hour. So what ends up happening is the locals will drive south to Indian Rocks Beach and go hang out there <laughs> because there's not nearly as much traffic. It was one of the reasons why, why we decided to call you know Largo and, and Indian Rocks Beach area our home was that exact reason. Um, while I think Clearwater is beautiful, I most certainly did not want to live in an area that was just completely tourist driven the entire time. That may not affect you at all. If you're an investor, it may be very attractive to you. So these are things you need to keep in mind. But having access to those amenities like the Clearwater Aquarium is awesome like the beach is awesome at the beach you can do everything from renting a paddle pub going on a dinner cruise you know jet skis boating parasailing 
everything is there at your fingertips. There's so much to do down there, but that's not all Clearwater is. You know, it's got parks and beautiful, um, you know, uh, other areas that you can focus on. Uh, you know, it has, has Ruth Eckerd Hall where they do concerts. It's one of the, the main areas in Pinellas County where you can go see, you know, a, a headlining act um, that comes to the area, which I really appreciate. Right now, the downtown bluffs, which is an area right on the intercoastal waterway. So when you look at Clearwater, um, do me a favor, put a map up here, guys, so they can check that out. The way Clearwater structured is you've got Clearwater, um, and then you go over the Clearwater Causeway, and now you're on that three mile stretch of beach, um, which is Clearwater Beach. And when you come back over to the mainland, downtown Clearwater is right there. And at the end of that, right on the water, you have the, the downtown bluffs. Well, this just received a $400 million approval development um, where they're putting in a hotel, apartments, um, condos, shopping, green space, um, an outdoor concert venue. I mean, it is absolutely stunning. So Clearwater is going through this humongous renaissance right now. So this is something that is bringing this city back to life. I think it's, you know, it is worth taking a look at if you're considering making a move, but you have access to so much. There are ice skating rinks in the area. I mean, I can go on and list this stuff forever, but we got to get to some more things before we wrap this up. Okay, another thing we want to talk about is weather. You know, when you come to Clearwater, you know, you're, you're envisioning beautiful sunshine and, you know, white sandy beaches, and that's what you're going to get for the most part, y'all. We get over 240 days of sunshine, uh, according to the national weather. It is absolutely stunning here. It is a huge part of the reason why we made the move from Detroit to the uh, Tampa Bay area was because of that weather. You know, my friends will ask me often, they'll say, Juan, what is the biggest difference between living in Detroit and living in Florida? Well, besides the obvious reasons, um, I tell them the same thing. You don't have to shovel sunshine. And that's just the truth, y'all. It changes your mood. It changes your attitude. I truly believe it changes your life. But here's what I know. It is not all sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. It has things that it comes along with, right? Like the summertime, you know, we're talking about July, August, September, you know, our temperatures can get up in the 90 degree range. Now, if you live on the beach, it's not nearly as stifling because you typically have a nice breeze that kind of pushes that back. Um, but it's also the rainy season. It rains almost every day during that time of the year. Um, you can almost set your watch to it. It's like it'll rain mid afternoon. You're like, oh, it's sometime between three and five because it's raining outside. That's reality. Um, but it, it, it comes and goes very quickly. It dries up very fast, but it tends to be very humid in those summer months as well. Now, when you get into season, and we talked about this just uh, a few minutes ago, we talked about the quality of the weather then. Our average temperature in the winter is in the low 70s. It can easily hit uh, mid 70s or 80s on a great summer or winter day, and it is world class. Like today, it is stunning out here. I'm making this video. Um, and it is winter here in Florida and today is going to be 76 degrees. The sun is shining. We got a little bit of a breeze. It is utopia as far as I'm concerned. And this is the type of weather that we have basically from the end of November until May when it starts to warm up again. And again, you get those three months in the summer where it's stifling hot. But I'm all about trading my five months of, of gloomy, gray, dreary, snowy, rainy, salt, all over the road and everything else weather uh, for the three months of heat any day of the week. If you can't stand extreme weather, I would encourage you to either reconsider because it definitely is warm in the summer and we have the potential for hurricanes, even though Tampa has been extremely fortunate, um, according uh, to the Hurricane Center, we haven't had a direct hit here in over 104 years. I'm not challenging anybody on this. Uh, we, I'm not trying to test, test the, uh, the powers that be about bringing that on, but we have been very fortunate in this area, but it's a reality, something you need to take into consideration. You know, we did when we made that move and I think you should too. And here's my favorite thing that I love to share. Y'all, when you move to the Clearwater area or Tampa Bay area in general, it is all about the lifestyle here. It feels very laid back. We have a flip-flop lifestyle um, and not everybody does. I get it. You can go live downtown and put your suit on just like everybody else. I get that. But the vibe here is laid back. The west coast of Florida offers something that I think is very unique. For 10 years, we thought we were going to live on the ocean side, the, the, uh, the east coast. And that was where we thought we were going to call home. But the more we visited this area, the more we fell in love with just how laid back the lifestyle was. For the most part, everybody's moving here for the same thing. 
You know, they want it to enjoy the lifestyle. They want to enjoy the outdoors. They want to enjoy the sunshine. They just want to live their best ideal life and come down here and what a better place to do it, you know, than here in Clearwater, Florida. And as we wrap up, I want to put two videos here that I think will absolutely help you. Uh, pros and cons of Clearwater and another Clearwater video that I think could help in terms of your research. But hey, don't forget to subscribe if you got any value out of today's video. And if you got any questions about relocating, investing, or buying in the Tampa Bay area, do not hesitate to reach out in my team. There is all my contact information listed down below. There's even a link on my calendar so you can schedule a time that's most convenient for you. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.